Hi guys, welcome back to this series. What should I be doing with my real estate agent website? Our focus on this series is on, I guess, essentially content marketing and what what we should be doing with the pages and, and blog section of our website to build uh, more of a search engine pre presence, you know, ranking higher on the search engines, as well as through our social media channels. There's so many ways we can actually publish and distribute our content, but it is important still in this age to have a real estate website that people are finding through many different channels. And they're also finding valuable once they get there. Now it is true that primarily buyers are looking at properties, but before these buyers even become buyers, they're looking to answer their questions and solve their problems. And this is where real estate blogs come into play. It's important to have an article library of advice, of real estate advice. And there's all kinds of ways that you can uh, create your blog. You can do it out of video and, and transcribe your video. So if you're not a writer and you want to be blogging, you can actually record yourself on video. So, so as I go through, through today's video and I'm going to talk about blogging and where to get ideas for blogging, if you aren't a writer, I want you just to shift that thinking into what if I put this on video, whatever she's saying, how to find all these topics, what needs to be in the blog? What if I did that on video and then simply had my video transcribed to written word and then optimized it for the search engines and put it out there? That is something you can absolutely do. You do not have to be a writer. You can also just record yourself on a recorder and send that out to get a transcript and get written word. So if you prefer speaking over typing, you still can blog. You just have to be smart about how you do it, okay? I'll just tell you really quick, and I'll probably bring this up a couple times over the series. If you make a video, you upload it into your YouTube channel, or you can upload it directly. There's a website that I use called rev.com, R-E-V.com. And for a dollar a minute, or for a discounted hour, they will transcribe your verbal word into written word for you. So I use them all the time. So for example, one of my series, if you, I'll go over here and I'll show you my, uh, my personal blog really quick, my personal professional blog, GloryBallon.com. I purposely went after a series, I did this exact strategy on this website, where I start with video and then we turn the video into a transcript and we optimize the, the transcript uh, for the search engines and for the user experience, adding in links, pictures, table of contents, video, that kind of thing. Um, so for example here, I'll show you one that I just completed myself. So I know this one has everything it needs to have here. Some of the other ones are still being updated. So we started with the video. This was a video of, of somebody, a presenter that came in and did a presentation. And then I ordered a transcript. So this particular one was about an hour long. So I paid, you know, $50, $60 for the transcript. And then I went in and just took the transcript and put it into the written form. And then I just went in and added links and colors and notes and boxes and things that'll break up that chunky, heavy text when somebody is sitting here reading it. So you could do it that way as well if you don't like to um, to type. You can even hire out your optimization services as well if you don't want to do that. So don't let it limit you when you think of blogging as being something you have to write. Think of blogging as something you have to create that informs, solves a problem, answers a question. Okay, There are blogs out there that do other things like entertain. Uh, but in our particular case in real estate, we're going to be talking about how we solve problems and answer questions. Okay, so now your next question might be, well, gosh, where do I get ideas? I have no idea even how to start blogging. Okay, best way to start blogging is start with the questions that your customers ask you. When they ask you things like, okay, we're making an offer, so now what happens? That's a blog. We're making an offer on a house and and there, there's gonna be multiple offers. What can we expect? Or how can we compete 
against multiple offers in a limited inventory market. What happens to my earnest money deposit? Um, my offer has been accepted, now what? What happens during the home inspection? Uh, should we be at the home inspection? What is escrow or how do the attorneys work? Um, it, what do I need to know about the HOA HOA fees? What are SIDS and LIDS or whatever your, your city taxes are called there that, you know, uh, charge the neighborhood for street assessments and improvements and whatnot. There's so many questions. If you will just listen to the questions that your customers ask, that is the best way to start a blog. And those actually do really well on the search engines as well. So that is one start, one starting point, just creating a whole library of the buyer process, closing costs, um, what to know when you're, when you're getting approved for a loan, how to improve your credit score. I mean, anything to do with that. And then same with the selling process, what to know when selling your home, what do you need to know about home inspections, what, how the appraisal can affect your sale, sale, are bad neighbors affecting your home sale, what, uh, you know, market conditions that could affect the, the sale of your home. Uh, when you're selling your home, what, what should you do when you have multiple offers? Uh, what happens to the buyer's earnest money? W when do I get the buyer's earnest money? You know, all those questions are real deal questions you could cover in the whole process. Okay. Now let me show you, uh, here on the screen, another way to get some information. All right. There is a website here called answer the public.com. And on answer the public, you can go into the search bar and type, type in any kind, any kind of keyword or subject. So let's just put buying a home and then I'm going to click get questions. Now what answer the public does is it scours the web and it takes lots of different Q and a type sites and it puts them into a, a digest for you here in a visual and in a data form. So you first you get this crazy looking wheel, but if you click on data, now you have what questions, why questions, will questions, Will buying a, a home affect my SSI? Will buying a home affect my Medicaid? Oh, there's one I haven't done. Will buying a home affect my financial aid? Why buying a home is a good investment? Why buying a home is a bad investment? How does buying a home affect taxes? What to expect when buying a home? What tax benefits for buying a home? There's which questions, where can? Can an eviction affect buying a home? Can I deduct buying a home? Can I refinance right after buying a home? Guys, you don't have to think. I mean, look at all these blog ideas. It goes on and on and on and on. And then you could dive specifically into one of those. If you type in sell a house, you have the same type of thing. How to sell a house during a divorce. How to sell a house you're upside down in. How to sell a house and buy one. How to, how to sell a house with nine cats. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Now, there's another site, if you need more, called Quora. And Quora is another one that has questions. I'm paying cash for a house. Do I need a realtor? Um, and you can actually go up here and just type in uh, selling a house. And you can look at that topic, selling your home. And you can scroll all the way down and look at any questions. Can you sell your house to your child for a dollar? I love that. I love that question. And, and some of these, uh, why do we do this? One, we want to answer real deal questions. Two, we want to create topics that would be interesting to everybody. You know, sometimes they're interesting, interesting only to a seller or buyer. And sometimes they're interest, interesting to the public in general, which make, make for great social media shares and amplification and eyeballs on your website, even if those people aren't looking to buy or sell right away. We also write real estate blogs because we want to continue to prove to Google that we are, uh, that your website is the authority on the topic of real estate and that you, the author, are an expert in the topic of real estate. And these things help your website rank higher for the topic of real estate. One of the reasons why Zillow and Realtor.com and Trulia and all those rank in the top three in most areas um, for most real estate related keywords is because Google views them as the authority. Well, the better you can position yourself as the authority in your market, the more likely you are to rank for particular niches and topics and, and, and things like that. Now, if I go over here and look at my analytics, let's just take a look at my clicky analytics. 
So clicky is, um, it, you know, it's something, it would be on the, along the same lines of Google Analytics, where you can view how many people viewed certain pages, where your visitors are coming from, um, how many actions they're taking once they're there, bounce rates, and these types of things. Now, clicky doesn't necessarily replace Google Analytics, but it, to me, it's got a it's easier to digest some of the information at a quicker glance, okay? Now, if we just take a small sample size of um, pages on my Las Vegas real estate website, these are, I sorted these by the most visited pages. <clears throat> now, excuse me, let's see how many um, pages my website has indexed. Okay, so not including general IDX pages, there's 4,000 pages. So 4,000 pages that are not, <clears throat> well, they actually might, excuse me, they might, they, they all, they'll all, they're not IDX pages uh, that come through my IDX channel. These have all been built out. Okay, so let's, let's just say there's 4,000 indexed um, pages that have been custom built out on the website. Okay, if you pull an IDX, you're going to see, uh, you know, 20,000, 30,000. Let's just say out of those 4,000 um, sites that are indexed, okay? So that we're looking at a sample size of out of all of those, where are people visiting, okay? So number one is a blog post that I created called How to Create um, Luck in Your House. And it's got information about that St. Joseph pr prayer statue that you bury. And I can tell you right now that my St. Joseph statue blog has been my number one visited um, blog in every format I've created since it started. It doesn't necessarily generate the type of leads that you would think it might. You would think it would it would generate more listing leads because these, these would be potential sellers, but a lot of them are already listed. But it is, uh, it is a, I do get uh, listing leads from it and I do get a lot of traffic from it. And it again is positioning my, positioning me as a as an expert author and my website as an authoritative player, authoritative uh, website in the world of real estate, okay? Um, so that's a blog post. And then we have an IDX page and we have my home page. And now number four is also a blog post. And this is my real estate market report, which we're gonna cover on a separate video more in depth, but it still is a blog post, okay? Then we have an IDX page. Next one is another blog post. When is spring break in Las Vegas? That's a hyper-local piece, and I'm gonna cover that in another video. Today, we're gonna to focus just on the real estate articles, okay? Then we have an IDX page, meaning a page I built that's, that's designed just for them to look at homes under 200,000. And then we have a blog post. The buyer missed the closing date, now what? Another blog post. Things to do for Easter, another blog post. Um, those are IDX pages, Summerlin Mall, another blog post. Okay, so you're getting the idea here. Uh, closing costs when selling a home, another blog post. Now that one brings in some listings. And so the, the proof is here that blog post article style writing, whether you start with a video or you start with a written word, is still very powerful on the search engines when done uh, with a lot of purpose. When when done with a focus on the customer and with the goal of diving so in depth into this topic that the, the buyer or seller will have no other questions once the blog is completed. What does not work anymore are these canned, boxed, how to stage your home, how to, you know, how to, um, the best colors to paint your house, this, that, and the other, that are 500 words that, that are a brief overview. Now, I'm not saying those are still bad to have. If having an article library that you can reference and send your consumers to or share on social media that are short with some bullet points or quick description, those are fine if you understand that's your goal. The goal is to build just a short article library or the goal is just to have a quick reference page. The goal is just to share something, a uh, short digestible item on social that I can then drive them into IDX. Fine, fine, and fine. Good, good, and good. Those are all acceptable, okay? Now, if they're not special and unique, they might not get any click-throughs on social, but I'm not opposed to having those article libraries um, 
But if your goal is, I want to stand out, I want to provide unique value, I want to rank on the search engines, you're going to have to do much, much better than that. Okay. So let's take an example. Let's take this home selling process um, when you're selling a house in Las Vegas. Let's take a look at that particular blog post. All right. So this is my brew website and I talk about it all the time, but for those of you that might be tuning in for the first time, brew stands for Ballon real estate websites. My marketing company, Ballon brands builds WordPress powered IDX driven real estate agent websites. And I'm on one of those right now. So I have the option of making this a wide theme or I have an option of using the right hand column. Uh, on a mobile device, let me shrink this down for you. See, I'm going to grab this little sidebar and I'm going to drag this down. Let me just close my background here. Okay. So if we look here at this, um, this little box and I'll shrink that down as far as I can, this is kind of what it would look like on a mobile device. Now this on a smartphone, it depends on the actual device, how much room, how much you can see in your window, but this is kind of the idea. Okay, so here's their blog post and um, let's take here, let's take a look at the components. Okay, first thing we have is an intro. You'll notice in my intro, I've also optimized with a link for them. Anytime there is something related to another topic on my website, I'll highlight it and include a link there. That's called internal linking where I'm linking to my own pages on my website. That's really good for showing the search engines what your website's about and kind of gives them a little bit more context as to what keywords go to what pages on your page and what you're deeming as important through those highlights as well. And then sometimes I will link off to another website that maybe is a source that I'm citing or maybe it has more information about something like city taxes or schools or or something specific that, that people can dive into, national real estate trends or national mortgage information. It's also a positive uh, signal to Google to reference off-site websites as well, okay? And then I'm gonna, I've got a call to action and I suggest putting your calls to action towards the top, not just at the bottom. Well, in some cases it's good to put them throughout. For example, that's really a call to action right there. And this is a call to action here. I'm I, I'm offering this seller what's your home worth, what's your house worth. I'm including this button, obviously, because if they want to go right to that home value and that's really what they were looking for, they've got an option to go there. This goes to my instant home valuation page. And on our brew websites, we actually help you integrate a tool that does that as well. Okay. And then I've got a table of contents, which I think is absolutely imperative. And I've got a video on how to create these, these um, table of contents uh, manually. If you have my website, the brew, you just drag it in. But if you're using another WordPress site, there are um, uh, plugins that you can add to create this table of contents. Well, what that table of contents does is it reduces bounce rates. It encourages clicks and actions on the page, especially on mobile, because the consumer doesn't want to read all that stuff. And they don't want to look how far they'd have to slide down to figure out what they might be looking for. Whereas a table of contents is going to help them quickly go to where they want to go. So if they want to learn about how much are appraisal fees, they click that button and it shoots them right down to just that answer. And then they can go right back up to the top and read the table of contents. This is creating a quality user experience, especially on a mobile device, which we know now over 50% of Google searches are already proven to be mobile devices. Depending on your market, you're probably seeing more than 50% of your web traffic is also coming from mobile at this point. So it's important that we are designing for mobile. Okay. Now the blog, I break down into portions. You've got to break it up into, I'm going to cover this topic and answer this question and this topic and this question in as small as pieces as makes sense. Okay. So this particular topic is closing costs when you sell a home in Las Vegas. So the first paragraph is on how much are commissions. All right. Now I just realized in my own teachings, this is an old blog. I need to go in and put some spaces in between wherever I like to put spaces now anywhere where there's two sentences together or more. 
because on the eyeballs, this is too much chunky text, especially on a, on a mobile device. We need spaces in there because the spaces help the eyes flow down the page. It makes it easier to read. So anytime there's two sentences together now, which is my pra best practice we implemented sometime last year, every time there's two sentences, we put a space. And then two sentences, we put a space. But I'm covering the answer, how much are commissions, in one paragraph, and then there's a divider. Then there's a break. Okay? This is an H2 tag. So when you're creating a blog, and I've got other lesson plans and videos on how to optimize your blog, these H2's headings, these are called headings. So there's heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, heading six. Look at it kind of like an outline. Heading one is the most important thing. Well, that's already the title of your page. That's a heading one. Now all of your subparagraph, all your paragraphs are broken into these little subsections. Those are heading twos. And then if you even want to go down even smaller, like let's just say under this how much are commissions, I'm going to divide down and separate that into buyer and seller commissions for some reason. One would be heading three and the other one would be heading three. Buyer commissions, heading three. Seller commissions, heading three as a sub. Those are kind of like subheadings of that how much are commissions, which is heading two. So if you kind of picture it in your head like an outline, what's most important and then and then, then you know what to put those in. Well, it's, it's a common practice to use these heading tags, one, they're larger, they're bolder, they stand out, stand out, so they're easy on the eyes and they look like a separator. They they visually make you understand this is, this is the topic section we're on right now. And they also indicate to the search engines as well that this is what this topic is about. And all of these H2 tags and H3 tags tell Google a little bit more, this is what the entire topic is about. They're kind of a supplementary to to your keywords and whatnot. They're telling Google, hey, this is what the topic's about. Although I got to tell you, Google's pretty smart smart now and doesn't need our guidance like it once did. So we don't keyword stuff anymore. And we're really covering a topic more than we are optimizing for a particular keyword. So it's smart, but these still, these still are best practices. Okay, so you see those. I covered the internal linkings. And then... Oftentimes, you'll see my little related articles at the bottom of a paragraph. And in this particular case, it might be of benefit for me to go back in and put more of those in there. So they could be a related article. It could be a call to action. It could be a phone number, click to call. It could be a little form now that they're going to fill out. It could be, I could have a, a little button right here now. Oh, this is actually really smart. I don't. I love, I love when I teach because I give myself ideas. <laughs> I'm inspired by teaching because um, I haven't looked at this blog post in a long time and it ranks number it ranks on number one in my market. So I never think about going in and changing it, but I should. I should still go in there and change it to today's best practices. Um, I should have a list of appraisers in Las Vegas, potentially. Put Make a list of um, home inspect, uh, appraisers, home appraisers in Las Vegas and make a list of them. And then here I could have a little button that says um, view the list of Las Vegas appraisers. It could open in a new tab so they won't lose their position here. And then um, that appraiser list would point back to my page. It's all about appraisers, uh, appraisals, and that would add more link equity to that blog post. So that's of, of a benefit to me. Anytime I'm creating a blog, I should be inspired, inspired to create another blog. If I'm not, I'm not doing it right. Even at this level where I'm blogging every day, all day, I still, every time I create, look at me right now, I'm, I'm inspired by just looking at my blog post of what else I could be doing to make this better, to, make, to add more value to the consumer, to add more signals to Google. My, my brain's just wired that way. So, so will yours be at a certain point if you're the one creating your own content. If you're not the one creating your own content, you've got somebody else you're directing this to, they should be inspired to go create more blog posts. Same with the video. I do a lot with video on YouTube. Every time I make a video, I'm, I, I open my Apple reminders and I'm adding three more videos I want to make because I realize I'm saying something about another topic that I haven't covered or, or, or a topic that I could drill down farther into. Because there's always, you know, you're addressing a niche or a topic, but there's always little niches inside the niche. There's always ways to drill down on that topic inside of that master topic, okay? So always have a list running of what you're going to do next, what you're going to do next, or what you're going to order next. 
okay? Um, a lot of this content I don't even write. I have ghost writers for. Most of my real estate articles anymore I don't write because I don't work in the field. Um, my real estate team here in Las Vegas, I do all the lead generation and they work with the clients. I used to work with clients, but that was seven years ago. I don't think I've worked with a client in seven years. So for me, it's a little bit more challenging because I'm not out there in the field every day. So I rely on other experts to create real estate articles. And then I go in there and clean them up and optimize them and, and make them look good. My marketing company, I opened balanbrands.com. We now have a writing staff and we write and sell articles to real estate agents as well. So if you don't want to be writing this stuff and you want to get on a strategic purposeful, consistent content plan, but you don't want to be the one that create one that creates it, call our marketing company and talk, talk to us about this. Okay. All right. And that's balanbrands.com. So carrying down again, I need to put some spaces in there. You're getting the idea of how I break down all of these topics. And then at the bottom, here's my other call to action. You'll notice it does not look like the call to action on the top. They're different on top. There's a short button. On the bottom, I've got a little box here that has um, a call to action. And then there's the menu. However, your theme shows your menu. Mine pushes that side column down to the bottom of the, um, of the section. Now, I will tell you when it comes to blogging that, uh, that it, when it comes to any page on your website, most people will not scroll past the middle of the page to get to where they're going to. And this is why this table of con contents is so important. I'll tell you another thing that this table of contents does. It also creates something called site links. Let's see if this one will do it. Hold on, closing. So here on this one, we actually, I don't think I see the site links. I do have a featured snippet, which I cover in another lesson plan. The featured snippet is when um, Google believes that you have the solution to the searcher's intent. A lot of times that's an answer to a question. Up here we have uh, the closing cost selling Las Vegas, and they believe that my answer there is a uh, correct answer. But another thing that that site links can do, let's see if I can... It's not guaranteed. All I can give you sometimes are best practices, and um, sometimes they uh, turn they they create those results, and sometimes they don't. It depends on how the algorithm is going to work with that particular query, and then the answer. So here's an example. This is my website here, and you see on the bottom how it has eight nine one four one and eight nine one four seven, but nobody else has that at the bottom. These are site links. And these site links have give us additional opportunity now for uh, people to click. And what they actually are is they are part of the table of contents right here. You'll notice I'm going to go to the Vegas page. See this table of contents? That's actually where they're formatting um, those clicks from. And so sometimes it's from the table of contents and sometimes it's just from creating these header tags these H2 tags and then having content inside of a block where it looks more like a list or a segregated structure. Sometimes they'll pull it out of that. They can detect a recipe, numbered sequence, bullet points. So there's lots of lots of ways to earn in these extra um, site links and things like that. Let me go back to my blog. So many tabs. All right, so that's another reason why we do these tables of contents and why we do these heading tags and separate things into individual paragraphs, okay? And so the best way to get started with when you're starting a topic is let's just say we go over to Quora and we're looking at, um, all right, I like this one. What is the most difficult part of selling your home without an agent? And by the way, you can click on the question and answer it. You can also click on the question and read other people's answers and get ideas. Now this person actually took the opportunity to answer in the format of a blog. And this is exactly a, a, a great answer. Um, I'm going to change my mind on that. It's not a, it's not necessarily a, um, a great answer for that particular question. It looks like they kind of pulled it from another blog and it looks like maybe, yeah, it's not, it's really not bad at all. Um, so this is, this would be the concept. So, so, the question is, what is the most difficult part of selling your home without an agent? One, setting the right price. 
And then he answers it. One of the most critical aspects of selling a home is setting the right price. Da 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 da. Okay. Now, this each paragraph, let's just say, if you're really, really covering the topic in depth, you could say break each one of these portions down, these these uh, segments down into a larger block, a larger topic. So, for example, setting the right price. Now, we're specifically answering this guy's question of what's the most difficult part, setting the price. But if you really wanted to dive into a setting, how to set your sales price, and I and you put that on video or you put it on blog and you're looking at, you're, you're describing charts and how to price ahead of the market and why you don't want to follow the price down and, and how a, a home that's priced correctly is going to get more views and might encourage multiple offers. You're not answering that in 200 words. You might be covering that topic with a thousand or two thousand words if you're diving in depth. Okay. So while this is an okay paragraph, it wouldn't be an okay blog post on its own. So there's going to be times when you might just write a paragraph, but then you make yourself a note and go, oh, that sounds like a good topic right there. How to set the price when selling your house. And you've got this great in depth topic. Well, you might choose to put the whole in-depth topic as that paragraph. And now this is a thousand words, okay? It could be. It, right now, let's just say it's two, 200. It could be a thousand words. All right, now look at this next section, marketing. So they did exactly what I teach. That marketing is a heading. It stands on its own. It indicates there's a new portion of this blog. And if if you like, if you if you are going to write this content, but there's no way you're going to sit and write thousands of words in one sitting. You could just write one p paragraph on Monday, write the next paragraph on Tuesday, write the next paragraph on th on Wednesday. By the weekend, you've got your blog written, and then you're just adding images, videos, optim you know, following my optimization steps to optimize it for the user and for the search engines. Okay. Now, look what he says about marketing. Even if your home is in an attractive location without proper marketing, you probably won't find any interested buyers. The best marketing strategy is listing in the multiple listing service, which only real estate agents have access to. How much, that is not answering the question in depth, but he didn't have to. He's answering their question as a whole. But if you're saying how to market a home to sell, you're going to dive into all kinds of marketing from open houses to whether or not magazines and newspapers still work to digital marketing to syndication to, you know, maybe pay-per-click marketing and all of the things that you believe a real estate agent should be doing to market a house. Proper photos, videography, drones, capture of the neighborhood, viewing, showing feedback, blah, 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 blah. All the things that go along with marketing. That's a blog post in itself, isn't it? How to market a home to sell. And if you even want to get more niche focused, how to market a home to sell in 10 days, how to market a home to sell during a divorce, how to market a home to sell with pets. You know, you can really dive into all these little specifics and make those little specifics part of that long blog or um, or part of part, each one individually on its own. Okay. But let's just say again, I'm going to go ahead and dive in and do this one at a thousand words. And I'm going to go in and do this one at a thousand words. Now I'm not counting the words saying I have to do a thousand words. I'm using an example that if I were to dive in depth to these, I could easily create a thousand words. Doesn't mean you have to. Okay. Depends on where you are and what your competition is and what you're doing. But I'm always thinking to myself, how can I better answer the question? What was the guy's question? His question was, what's the most difficult part of selling your home without an agent? So do you have to answer more than that in the marketing portion? Not necessarily, but do I want to add a link in there for him to click over to an article that's more in depth? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'll make myself a note and say, create a blog post on marketing your home to sell. Or how about this niche one? How to market your house when you're a for sale by owner. And you tell them every possible way they can market their house to for sale by owner. But then you have, of course, port links to other pages on your website. You have call to action to get their home value. You've got an offer to help them sell if they, if they have any challenges down the road, whatever it is. So that's another uh, a, a blog idea, okay? Managing emotions. So now he basically describes that when you're selling for sale by owner, you're emotionally connected. 
where if you use a real estate agent, you're going to have a biased party that's not connected personally to the emotions and the history and whatnot of the house. And so they're able to remove that. That's a nice paragraph. Would that one go on any longer? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe if you're passionate about that segment and you understand more about it, that could go a little bit longer. And then closing the deal. All right. Now, let me tell you something. If I were to write a blog post called, what's the most difficult part of selling your home without an agent? And I only write the blog post as this, it probably won't rank on the search engines. It's just not enough in most markets to stand against the competition. Okay. So I personally am going to, going to go farther with this. I'm going to go, I'm going to find more challenges with selling a house for sale by owner. How about paperwork? What's the most difficult part of selling your home without an agent? How about the paperwork? Holy cow. That's a big part of what the for sale by, by for sale by owners have a problem with. How about what's the most difficult part of selling your home without an agent? You actually make less money. Here's why. And you talk all about commissions and how for sale by owners are trying to save the commission. So they try to cut all their costs and sell. And then they don't, they're not in the MLS. They don't have people looking at their properties and they wind up negotiating for a deal much less than what they could have gotten by putting in the MLS. And it, and it would have been more even after paying the real estate agent commission. Okay. Um, here's another one. How about, gosh, now I need to go write this blog. Uh, what is the most difficult part of selling your house by owner? Um, showings showings who wants to be you got to deal with all that yourself there's no agent in the picture you got to deal with people just knocking on your door or you know showing up and what how do you, you know nobody walking them through the house do you stay but if you leave now there's nobody there walking them through or you know and they're probably not coming with their buyer's agents why is a buyer's agent showing up for sale by owner they're probably looking at properties in the mls um, i could go on and on and on okay and so i would if I'm going to create a blog post designed to just share on social, this might be fine. If I'm going to write a blog post designed to rank on the search engines, I'm going to write two, 3000 words easy. And I'm going to add video and I'm going to add images and I'm going to add a table of contents. It's the same format every time, uh, essentially for me that I'm, that I'm working on building. Okay. So less about the actual number of words, although you hear me say numbers, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000, it's more about how deep can I cover this topic in a way that's not just stuffing words on the page, but is actually helping that customer. If you can do that in two to 300 words and nobody else has, then you're set. You know, if you're writing a, a restaurant critique about Hell's Kitchen that just opened and I want to talk about Gordon Ramsay and Hell's Kitchen that just opened, I might have a chance to write a short critique and rank on the search engines. But over time, as more and more blogs develop and more and more people write about uh, that restaurant, it'll be harder and harder to rank. So I need to do better. What else does that person want to know that's going to Hell's Kitchen? They want to know about pricing. They want an access to the menu. They want to know how they book reservations. They want to know how close the tables are together, how private it is, or how, you know, they're, how, how, what is parking like? Is there valet parking? Do they have to pay for parking? All of those things are going to come into play. Do they have a gluten-free menu? Okay. So you have to put your head in the mind of the consumer when you're writing these real estate articles and really think about how much more can I cover them? All right. So that is basically the idea, images, videos, wherever possible. In fact, I don't know why my video is not on that page. I have a video for this. So I'm going to go back and fix that up. Um, anytime that you can, video, dividers, quotes, stats, highlights, um, most of this stuff that I'm doing here, like these yellow boxes and things like that, uh, we're building into the brew. But for right now, they're done through Short Codes Ultimate which is a free plugin that allows you to add quotes and boxes and highlighted items with different colors. Uh, you can add dividers. So if you have a WordPress site, you can do everything here that I'm doing. You just might have to do more manually than, than what my real estate websites naturally have built in them. So what you should be doing with your real estate agent website is blogging, creating real estate, customer centric, in-depth informational articles. See you on the next video in the series.